What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell, and I'm making a quick commercial here for SeerCustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxana. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual stream yard studio with a pretty amazing dude by the name of Leonard Perlmutter. He is actually the founder and director of the American Meditation Institute. Leonard, it is an honor to have you on the Jay Campbell podcast. How are you? I am fine. And uh, I, it's, it's my honor. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, um, as most people who now watch the Jay Campbell podcast recognize that Leonard is the perfect type of person to be on the Jay Campbell podcast because this is now about inner work, meditation, and who better to speak about meditation than Leonard. Let me give you guys a little bit about his bio. So he's actually an author and his new book, which is coming out on September, early September, September 7th, Your Conscience, describes the key to unlock limitless wisdom and creativity and solve all of life's challenges. Just the the secondary headline is, is, is enough for me to want to read it. It is a simple, logical introduction to how your mind works and the perfect entry point for anyone who wants to live a more fulfilling life simply by learning to depend on their conscience. Again, it arrives on September 7th. Um, so Leonard helps people create immediate positive change in their lives by learning to rely on, again, their conscience using simple, practical methods that anyone can employ to infuse their lives with more happiness love or creativity looking outside ourselves for happiness which i happen to seriously agree with is a useless pursuit leonard believes that we can receive all of the guidance we need by trusting our conscience or our inner knowing as i would say it so leonard welcome to the jay campbell podcast before we jump into the talking points tell me just a little bit about your viewpoint on what is happening on planet earth today and for a marker it is now August 12th, Thursday, 2021. Well, as uh, at many various times uh, throughout history, there, there comes a, a time when the forces of light and the forces of darkness uh, conflict in such a way that the, the teaching of yoga science is ready to be heard and employed. Otherwise, if, as we all know, human beings tend to forget, that's all part of the game, the, right. in, in this play that we're in. Uh, we're very smart, we're very intelligent, we can do lots of good things, we can uh, send a rocket to the moon and human beings to the moon, but we also have a tendency to forget. Uh, and at certain uh, intervals uh, in time, uh, when the forces of darkness and light come together, then, uh, as is stated in the uh, the Hindu tradition, uh, that uh, uh, Vishnu was uh, reincarnates, so to speak, uh, 
uh, and sends a messenger, sends uh, wisdom uh, that people uh, can work with and experience the truth once again so that they can rectify the situation and make it even better. So I think we're in one of those periods now. So do you, and, and already, because your answer is something that I want to investigate further, um, do you see where we are right now with obviously, because I like to label everything, you know, as resonance or dissonance. And you, like you said, it, you know, the, the dualistic white versus dark. I mean, obviously the dark would be dissonant. The resonant would be the light. Do you see the resonant maintaining order and restabilizing this planet's trajectory into what many would, you know, term a quote unquote an age of enlightenment, a golden age. Do you see that coming after we get through what we're in now? I see it first and foremost, uh, beginning, uh, in each individual's consciousness. Beautiful. And that's as far as I really get taken. I'm not a proselytizer. Uh, but I do know the power of one. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the the flutter of a of a wing of a butterfly in South America can ha have a, a connection to a snowstorm in Europe. So right. so I get that. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm not really interested in living in the future. Uh, sure. Uh, everything that I teach has come to me by being uh, uh, in the present moment and just Beautiful. dealing with relationships that come to me. Awesome. Can't be a better answer than that. Okay. So perfect. Well said. And obviously I'm in total agreement. Um, the precious present is all we have. That's right. So, so just jumping into our talking points and again, you know, with someone like you, it could go in a lot of different directions, but, uh, why is it hard to follow, you know, the inner guidance, you know, as you would label it, your conscience is advice and how do we make it easier? Well, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it is a challenge. So <clears throat> there's, there's a marvelous little story about uh, this man <clears throat> who uh, walked to work every day. And uh, he was noticing uh, over uh, um, many a month period that he gained quite a bit of weight. And, and this was a concern to him. And so uh, he spoke to a very close friend of his that he uh, cherished his uh, advice. And the friend uh, asked him, uh, well, can you explain to me uh, 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 what you do in the morning and, and, and how, you, how do you get to work and, and what, what happens? And so the, uh, the fellow who has been gaining the weight uh, says uh, to uh, his friend, well, I, I always walk because it's very good exercise. It helps me keep uh, some weight off. And, and, and that's all very good. Uh, but uh, just before I get to the office, uh, I can smell when I'm ab about a block away, I can smell the bakery and the fresh goods that are always uh, displayed in, the, in the, uh, the window. And as I'm walking past the bakery, the next thing I understand and that I come uh, that comes into my awareness is that I'm, I'm walking into my office with a little uh, white bag filled with donuts. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you have any advice <laughs> for me? And so uh, uh, the friend, you know, again, being a good friend, he, he suggested, well, why don't you leave your wallet home? And the, and, he, and the fellow looks at him and he says, really? You want me to steal the donuts? <laughs> right. Exactly. So right. the senses and the unconscious mind and the ego, they are very powerful. Now, they're often wrong, but they are never in doubt. And they're, the, the ego, of course, is, is tethered to the reptilian brain. Right. So it's always looking for pleasure. And it's always looking to avoid on things that are unpleasant. But you and I know, and most human beings know, that that which is pleasant isn't always good for us, and that which is unpleasant isn't always bad for us. So if I live my life enslaved to things that the mind likes and the mind does not like that mental inflexibility creates a physical inflexibility. So the contraction that is in my mind 
because my outer actions are in conflict with my inner wisdom. That conflict echoes within the consciousness of every cell. So instead of having a, a, an organ like a liver being relaxed, it's as stressed out as my mind is today. Right. And is in, in just as much conflict. Because if there's conflict in my mind, there has to be conflict within the consciousness of my liver. And that does not allow the liver to receive vital energy, vital prana, to serve the entire organism to the full capacity that it has. And Beautiful. for you and me, that, that becomes a problem. Yeah. It's the, the whole quantum physics aspect that universe is a mirror. And what you put out is what reflects back to you, what receives. So your cellular health, when you talk about the liver, is literally a direct reflection of what's going on in the mind. It's amazing. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. So does relying on your conscience to make your decisions <laughs> mean that you can't let loose and have fun? Well, my experience is that uh, meditators and yoga scientists are pleasure seekers because when we rely on the conscience to make choices uh, insofar as what we're going to think and what we're going to speak and how we're going to act, we feel better physically, right. mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, so I don't want to necessarily give that up. And the conscience isn't always a curmudgeon. So uh, if, if I go to your house uh, and uh, you, you set the table for a wonderful dinner and I'm your guest and uh, uh, dinner is over and uh, you bring out uh, uh, some dessert and you have been, uh, you've been working on uh, baking an apple pie for me because you knew that apple pie is my favorite. <laughs> so out you come with this beautiful and it smells great. I can smell it as soon as it came out of the kitchen and uh, you offer me a slice of pie so now the conscience knows and, and we all know hey we have a body we have senses life is to be enjoyed and i'm in this situation i'm in the present moment you have uh, worked very hard for this whole meal and especially for this dessert so when you offer uh the slice of apple pie to me my conscience would probably give me the good housekeeping seal of approval yes thank you very much is is the reply that uh you're supposed to ask that you're supposed to give to well your friend and so i do and i finish uh, the the piece of apple pie and you notice that i have finished it so you come back over how did you like it i said well it was the most it was the most delicious apple pie i've ever had and then you say to me well would you like a second <laughs> Now, the ego and the senses and the unconscious mind will say, yes. But the conscience respecting my health and my well-being will say, look, you just had a delicious piece of apple pie. The second piece, it looks the same, but it's not the same. And it's not going to have the same consequence. So I'm advising you right now to say, no, thank you. Beautiful. And that kind of mental flexibility to have the slice of apple pie without any guilt and enjoy it to the fullest uh, uh, amount that you possibly can, and then to say no thank you to the second. That's the joy of artful living. Profound. And let me just say that no connoisseur of amazing apple pies like myself would ever offer a slice without it owl mode. <laughs> i'm with you let me set the record straight and you know when you said apple pie i was like we're connected this is a vulcan mind meld now because that's my favorite thing i mean i you know i would unfortunately say yes to the second piece yeah. uh but no i your 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 point is is incredibly prescient it, it, it's it's imperative in the world that we live in today that, you know, people understand balance and, you know, recognition that especially someone like you who teaches meditation that, you know, sitting at that perch at the fulcrum, you know, from the place of neutral observation 
is the awareness that you must get to when you, again, are attempting to achieve balance in every aspect of your life. And having that second slice, especially after you've just eaten probably a really nice meal, is leaving balance. That's right. That's right. And and balance means you got to work at it. Exactly. It's like uh, learning how to ride a bike. If you don't learn how to ride a bike, you're really not going to find that sweet spot of balance. And right. You won't you won't know the joys of uh, riding a bicycle, so you work at it. Anything that's worthwhile takes work, and so to to be happy, to be healthy, to be secure in this world, you need to work. We're working anyway. We're expending mm -hmm. energy twenty four seven because every all of life is a relationship, and every mm -hmm. relationship requires an action, and every action brings about a consequence. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, many of us know the consequence that we want to uh, experience. We want to be happy. We want to be healthy. We want to be secure. We want loving, nurturing, creative relationships. So the only question really is, how are we going to get to point B from point A? And that takes a business plan. We, we, most people don't have a business plan for this. <laughs> if you want to start a business, you know, you'd speak to the banker, you'd, you'd maybe you do a survey, see if anybody wants your product or your service. But we, you know, people, they all say, everybody says, oh, I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. I want to be secure. I want wonderful relationships. But they don't have a business plan. They don't have right. a philosophy of life. Right. Well, yoga science is both a science and a philosophy and a psychology which centers on the mind because i cannot take any actions this mind body sense complex cannot take an action unless and until the mind moves first mm -hmm. the mind moves first the body simply follows right right so if i wanted to raise my hand i wouldn't be able to do it unless i entertained a thought exactly Right. That gives tremendous emphasis to our thoughts. That's where the power is. It's our most important resource. And why will and intention is so, you know, such a powerful uh, actionary agent in, in, in life. At, you know, you say the mind, I love how you say the mind, body, soul experience or just the mind, body awareness. But, you know, people, you know, going back to not having a plan, I mean, it's incredible how many people today truly do because of social media and the narrative and, you know, just this instant gratification world that we live in. They want, 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 but as you said, they're not willing to create a plan. You know, I, as a child, I remember, I can't even remember who it was, but you know, you, uh, if you, what is it? If you, if you, um, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm-hmm. Right. So in, in truth, without having, you know, a progressive mind that seeks out, you know, through will and intention, a desire that they plan for or account for or create, you know, a strategy, a business plan, as you were saying, there's no possible way that you'll ever get to the end of that road, which will seek, you know, or give you or provide for you, you know, gain or attribution or whatever it, you know, comes from having that plan and that methodology. That's right. So uh, you're bringing up an extremely important point uh, about desire because desire uh, is uh, is the key. Those thoughts and, and desires are the key because the desires are the fuel for action. Right. right? Uh, they're neither good nor bad, but they are the fuel. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of different desires, especially in this culture where we're triggered constantly 24-7. <laughs> with this all this technology and people are overwhelmed they don't have this business plan they don't have a philosophy of life to understand what's happening and to make conscious discriminating choices about whether they're going to do it or whether they're not going to do it right and so if it looks pleasant and it smells pleasant and it tastes pleasant and it sounds pleasant and it feels pleasant uh you know what we're supposed to do we're supposed to go for it just do it right uh, but that doesn't always uh, play out too well so we have to uh, learn to discriminate. How are we going to learn to discriminate? Well, fortunately for you and for me and for every other human being, unlike other animals, we have part of our mind 
that can discriminate. And that's our conscience. It can reflect perfect wisdom from the super conscious portion of the mind. Right. Oh, the super conscious portion of the mind. What, what is that? I mean, <laughs> I, I went to I went to school. I, you know, in fifth grade, I learned about uh, uh, the unconscious and I learned about the conscious mind. Well, what is this super conscious mind? The superconscious mind is not a figment of my imagination. It's the same portion of the mind where Albert Einstein saw mathematical equations. It's the same portion of the mind where Paul McCartney hears beautiful melodies. It doesn't mean, Jay, it doesn't mean that you're going to become a songwriter. It doesn't mean that I'm going to become a physicist. What it <laughs> does mean is that in the midst of relationships, to know what's to be done and what's not to be done, if right. I can lean on my conscience for advice mm -hmm. as jiminy cricket would say you know let your <laughs> conscience be your guide and then test it and see how it makes you feel my experience is i, I felt better so if if we we all know uh in the garden we we might have what they call a, a soaker hose it looks like a hose but it has got uh zillions of little holes in it Right. And that's to dribble the water along the length of the hose to feed whatever plants and flowers are, are, are in your garden. And if you check the pressure at the far end of the hose of this soaker hose, uh, the water coming out is, is very weak. So that's like desires. We have so much energy going into dribbling here and dribbling there because the, the culture is asking us to buy this and try that. Right. That we have very little energy to do what is really necessary to bring me the happiness, to bring me the health, to bring me the loving, nurturing relationships and the security. So if, if I have a conduit that's eight inches and there's a certain amount of pressure going through it, if I reduce that size to six inches, oh, the pressure is greater at the far end. And if I reduce it even more, then the pressure at the far end is even more. And that's my creative energy. Right. What am I going to use it for? And what right. is the purpose of my using this energy of desire? Beautiful. I, I like to say, to, to, to make a, a, another analogy, is I like to say that creation is being in this world and consumption, which is what they want the dark forces to have you is to be of this world. And as you just said, you literally in today's day and age with technology and fragmentation of the brain and crushing curiosity, you can go from Netflix to porn, to video games, to the internet, to the news and literally Leonard never create anything. And when you're not in that energy of creation, which is divinity, then how can you, you know, live whatever, however you want to phrase it, a level 10 life when all you do is consume. So here's the rub. Human beings are animals and animals are prone toward what is referred to as the herd instinct. Exactly. But we've all seen these uh, uh, nature uh, movies uh, on, on TV or, or whatnot, or on uh, the internet. And when, uh, when danger arises, uh, participants, members of, of the herd, they want to be together. Mm -hmm. They want to tuck into the center of the herd because they want to be protected. So being on the peripheral periphery of, of, of uh, the herd can be very dangerous. So unless you have the guidance of something that is beyond that which changes, beyond the conscious mind, beyond the unconscious mind, which are both always changing to something right. which is an eternal truth. And for us, it's reflected by our conscience this super conscious wisdom that comes from the super conscious portion of the mind that Einstein uh, saw and that McCartney uh, hears is accessible to every human being. 
to determine their thoughts, their words, and their actions. Because you know, and I know, we need stuff. <laughs> we need a car. We need a, we need a home. We need food. So it's not like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw out everything and just have a loincloth and, and, and right. by, uh, just breath alone. It's not going to work. I'm not, I'm not equipped for it. So I need some stuff, but I don't need everything right. that the culture is offering. Right, right. And it's getting to a place of awareness where you realize what is enough. Mm -hmm. And most people truly struggle with recognition of that. I'll give you another analogy. My wife and I are doing a call tonight to a big private group. And one of the bullet points is how people who are in long-term relationships get complacent and bored and they live in the same, you know, space, sphere, whatever it is for so long that right to what you just said, Leonard, yeah. the accumulation of stuff becomes paramount to their existence. And all of a sudden, 20 to 30 years of accumulating stuff is all that matters. And then all of a sudden they get, you know, elderly or they get to a place where it's time to downsize and they can't even do it because the stuff is the most important thing in their life. So you bring up one of the most important points. And that is one of the greatest obstacles that every human being has to deal with is attachment. Exactly. Attachment. Because attachment yes. sucks energy. And it and our, my creative energy is enslaved to my eyes and my nostrils and my mouth and my ears and my hands and my feet. All my creative energy is being extruded, just like when we squeeze the tube of toothpaste in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's easy for the toothpaste to come out. But have you ever tried to put the toothpaste back in the tube? <laughs> no, it's impossible, right? And that's what we're doing 24 7. And Unbelievable. Really, the, the culture does not have uh, too big of a problem with that because it's good for business, you see. That's exactly but, right. But the decisions that we make create the culture. Exactly. So right. if, if I, uh, if I give attention to creating a new culture for me and you do for you based on your conscience, slowly, slowly, it will change the culture. Right. Right. Beautifully said. It's, it's mind blowing to see loved ones, parents, friends, colleagues grow so attached. Yes to the physical and material things that when you literally then have a conversation with them about like, you know, cause I've literally, I mean, I'm sure you've had many times too, but like, I literally look at some of these folks, you know, with loving eyes, but still like, are you serious? Like you're not taking this stuff with you. So like, you, you're, bring, you're bringing up another uh, extremely important point, And that is about the nature of thoughts. First of all, we have to start, with with the realization that every human being is addicted to thinking we are right. addicted to thinking and there are two essential forms of thoughts now there, i'm going to use a sanskrit word from the ancient indian uh, language only because english and german uh, uh, don't really have too many words that have uh, to do with spirit they are right. more about material stuff. And they yeah, do a good job. Right. Those languages uh, do a good job defining materiality, but right. not, so, love, not so good for uh, spirit. They love the, le they love the left brain. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. But now with the right brain, you see, we're, we're going to two forms of thoughts are pravriti and nivriti. The word vritti means circling energy circling energy, circling energy of thought waves, circling energy of thought waves. And uh, they, these thought waves go out into the world. That's why these thoughts 
then project creative energy through the senses because that's the delivery system. Right. So we can, so we look and we smell and we taste and we listen and we touch to find out, Oh, what's going to make me happy. What's going to, what's going to make me healthy. What's going to uh, uh, make me secure. And so those are properties. So most people are addicted not only to thinking, but to these properties that lead them outside into an ever changing world. Right. The other kind of thought, which is in the vast minority, are called nivrities. These are circling thought waves that go within. Right. Mm -hmm. To the core, to the center of consciousness that is within me, that is me, having this human experience. Right. And part of consciousness that is within me, that is me, contains an intuitive library of wisdom known right. as the super conscious portion of the mind. Right. That can tell me 24 seven, the thought to think the word to speak and the action to take. Yes. So the key to successful living is to balance the two worlds inner of wisdom and outer of action. Right. So if I can have a philosophy of life, when I am in the midst of a relationship that requires an action, if I can take just a moment to bring my consciousness within and tap into through the conscience, my super conscious wisdom, I will then know how to deal with this potential purchase of this automobile or <laughs> this potential per purchase of this uh, bag of donuts or whatever it happens to be because I've united the two worlds and my action is in service to whatever I hear from my own inner wisdom. So I'm not the doer. I am simply the instrument. I am the agent. My experience is by doing that more and more, the first perk that you receive is fearlessness. Right. It's not that you're not aware of fear, but you're no longer hijacked by fear. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Leonard, I could talk to you all day. Uh, I mean, so eloquently and elegantly stated. Um, to, to 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 stay on the on the fear vein, it's literally a recognition that death is not the end, mm -hmm. and that you, as you already said earlier, are uh, all of us, each of us, are spirit beings inhabiting physical avatar bodies, and it's the recognition that balance in spirit form when recon recognizing that that is your pure and primary essence is the purpose of being here. And it, it's, it's so what you said is so beautiful. We could go so many different directions with it, but. Uh, well, let's I talk mean, about death. Let's yeah. talk about death because that is a major trigger in our culture. Right. A major trigger. Right. When, when we hear or, uh, uh, talk about death, we're triggered immediately. Uh, uh, what comes tumbling from our unconscious mind are all of these preconceptions. Yes. I'm carrying them, but really I got them from my parents right. or my grandparents or right. from uh, uh, people in the culture. So, I'm, But I'm carrying them. They are the software of my mind today. So I have uh, a, a reptilian response. And that is the fear of annihilation. Oh my gosh, the sky right. is falling. <laughs> but if I if I can if I can look at death and 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 just eyeball to eyeball and 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 investigate what it really is, I have experienced death my whole life. Right. 
I can remember when I was five. Right. That five-year-old child is no more. Right. But I am here today. Right. And so, and everything changes in the material world. You know, uh, uh, I, with uh, uh, homage to uh, uh, George Harrison, all things must pass. All things right. must pass. Right. All things must pass, except for one thing, and that is consciousness. Right. That is within me. That is me. And so with death, I have come to realize that death is not annihilation. Reptilian no. brain is not correct on that. No. It is change and growth. Exactly. And without death, you don't get life because without breaking the eggs, you're not going to be able to make an omelet. That's exactly right. The, the spirit being's purpose, as I see it, is evolution and growth. That's right. As many lifetimes as that takes or occurs, regardless of your spiritual beliefs, energy cannot be contained or annihilated or destroyed. And we are energy beings in physical avatar bodies in this, you know, whatever this realm dimension, conscious experience, however you want to define it, that is who we are. And it requires the human to do the inner work or the inward path, as you said, to get to that awareness. And without that inner path taken, that seeking, that again, meditation, contemplation, introspection, grounding in nature, whatever it is that allows you to attain the mind silence, the stillness, you're never, as many times as you have to go around, you know, in the with the karmic wheel or whatever you want to call it, you're never going to come to that awareness that you are just an energy being. So let me throw something out to you. And that is that fear or anger or selfishness right, service to self can actually help us attain that balance and that wisdom that you're talking about. Because you had mentioned that, like we learned in fifth grade, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. The key, though, is it can be transformed. Right. So fear, anger, selfishness, this is all my creative energy in a debilitating, contractive form. Contraction, right. So yeah. if I give attention to it in that form and I serve it in that form through my speech and action, I'm going to be in pain and I'm going to cause pain. Right. But sacrifice, sacrifashi, making it sacred when it comes to me, when I'm driving down the highway and some maniac cuts me off in traffic and I have to slam on the brake <laughs> and I have an immediate new reaction with anger from the unconscious mind, what am I going to yeah. do with that energy? Right, right. Am, am I going to let the ego take it and run with it? Or am I going to sacrifice it back to the origin from which it came? If I right. do the latter, I will be able to be the beneficiary of yes. the transformed kind of energy which came from the fear, which came from the anger, which came from the greed. But now it's strategic reserves of healing energy and willpower and an increase in my creative capacity that I can use to fulfill the purpose of my life. Leonard, you and I are so similar. I, I, I just said the same thing two days ago in a different form. What I said was, and it's the same analogy. You can have the most amazing meditation, mindfulness experience in the morning, in your morning ritual, and then you get in your car and you go to work. That's right. And that maniac, whoever or whomever she or he may be, cuts you off. You have two choices. You can react out of fear, which is what 80 to 90% of people will automatically do. Because as you said, the ego mind, which is again, designed to keep us in alive, to keep us surviving is going to instinctually, ah! or you can respond out of love and send that person, and this is, as you know, the, the, the difficult task, but send that person a wave and say, you're obviously having a bad day. <laughs> you're obviously I, not even in the car. 
<laughs> I'm sending you right. I'm sending you a resonant love and light frequency or thought back. And this is the key. And you just said it. You have just literally reverberated a dissonant energy. And now your resonant energy will transmute the dissonant energy. And this is where people lose that understanding. So let's remind, let's remember one other thing. Everything you're saying is, 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 is totally in sync with uh, what I'm saying. One other thing is that this person that cuts me off in traffic, this person is actually a pawn. Right. Exactly. Being used. This person's ignorance is being used by my karmas sure. to provide me a conscious relationship yes. with fear, a exactly. conscious relationship with anger. This right. fear and anger that is stored in my unconscious mind, right. I'm not consciously aware of it. Exactly. Unless and until I have a relationship. Mm -hmm. This man who cuts me off in traffic, as painful as that situation is, it brings those forces forward. Once they are in my conscious mind, I can do something with that. Energy. That's exactly right. I can transform it. So thank you very much. That's beautiful. And 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 up until I was 45 years of my life, I would be that guy That's who right. wanted to pull run that car down and That's get right. him out. That's Why right. would you do that That's to me? Right. That's right. But that person is no more. <laughs> He's gone. That's right. But you're still here. That's exactly right. Change and growth. Change and growth. So let's talk about your book All because right. this is such a profound podcast. I mean, I let her. We I thought we were. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be so honest with you. Like I'm moving this podcast, but you know, I have to. I have to pull some uh, levers with my podcast agency when it it requires me to pull levers, but uh, this podcast is going to the front of the line. Okay. But so one of your bullet points, and I know we have been talking about your book, but one of your talking points is the four functions of this the is, mind. This is big. This is huge big. because the, the mind's where the action is without, uh, without uh, uh, movement in the mind, we don't take a physical action. So there, there are four functions of the mind. This is how the mind works. We, 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 we've known that there are different voices in my mind, right? Uh, but nobody ever taught us anything about it. So there are four. First is the ego. The ego is, as I mentioned, is tethered to the reptilian brain. So it's all right. about survival, all about pleasure, uh, all about eliminating pain. And uh, I, I, I picture the ego uh, always having a, a chainsaw Wrapped on its on its hip, because so because, that's right. Because no matter what the relationship is, the ego cuts it in half and says, "Well, this is this is good and this is bad." So it's always pairs of opposites, right? Pleasant, right, right. unpleasant. Ego right. cuts everything up. Okay, so that's that's ego, and so uh, the senses are all about uh, fulfilling uh, uh, their their desire for gratification of what can be seen, what can be smelled, what can be tasted, what can be heard, what can be touched. So the senses are extruded. The, the energy, our creative energy is extruded so that we look and smell and uh, taste and hear and touch and bring back information into our awareness about what's to be done and what's not to be done. What's to be said? What's not to be said? What's to be thought? What's not to be thought? So you, there's the senses. And and you have the ego, you have the senses, then you have the unconscious mind. That's sort of the repository of right. all of our merits and demerits. Everything that you and I believe is important for our self-preservation is stored in the unconscious mind. Right Now, the ego, the senses, and the unconscious mind are very helpful many times. Uh, we need a, we need a healthy ego, you and I, to be able to uh, converse as, as right. we are conversing right now. We need an ego to drive an automobile. So they're not always wrong. Same with the senses, uh, back to reference with the apple pie. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of the habits that we have in the unconscious mind are very helpful. Mm -hmm. But 
the ego senses and unconscious mind have a limited perspective. Right. They cannot see the entire panorama. Mm -hmm. And so they're often wrong, just like these talking heads on TV. Often <laughs> wrong. They're often wrong, but they're never in doubt. Right? right. They're never in doubt. <laughs> and they look marvelous. <clears throat> So, so there's oh, your man. ego senses and unconscious, and they're pushy. They're pushy. Yeah. Oh, they're like, yeah, and I don't mean any uh, disparagement. They're very loud to uh, to uh, uh, people who uh, sell the used cars or, or aluminum right. siding salespeople. They they do right. they do good work. Right. We have bought used cars, and we have benefited from them, and we have bought aluminum siding, and we have benefited sure. from that. But they're you know they have they have uh, a persona of being pushy, loud. Well, that's the right. ego, the senses, and the unconscious mind. Now, the conscience is the fourth function. The conscience is sort of quiet and demure, sort of speaks in whispers. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what you should do. This is what you should not do. This is what you should say. This is what you should not say. Mm -hmm. So the reason that the conscience is so helpful is that it can it acts as a mirror. Mm -hmm. That's its whole functioning, is a mirror, and it can reflect perfect wisdom from the super conscious portion of the mind that resides at the core of our being. Right. Religionists refer to that as part of our soul. Mm -hmm. right? Just words that they use to try to approximate uh, some communication. So the conscience has the functioning of reflecting inner wisdom. But when we don't use the conscience regularly, the pushiness of the ego senses and unconscious mind are so loud mm -hmm. that the conscience, which is the only function of the mind that can discriminate, determine, judge, and decide... <laughs> will decide in favor of the ego senses and unconscious mind because the noise is louder than the signal for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if I were an engineer, I would know that in order to accentuate this low signal, this quiet signal of the conscience, right. I first have to turn the noise down Mm -hmm. of the ego senses and unconscious mind. Right. And I do that through benefits that we get from meditation. Inner work, yes. Inner work, one-pointed attention, one-pointed attention. Uh, detachment, create a space between stimulus and response. Not obliterate it like the culture wants so that you're quick. Right. No. One point at attention, detach, have a space between stimulus and response. That provides us the freedom to use the conscience, to check with the superconscious wisdom, to know what's to be done, when it's to be done, and when it's not to be done. And the last tool that we have for meditation that we gain is willpower, the mm. muscles of willpower. Most of us have very little willpower anymore right. because right. we're bombarded with these messages that we talked about all right right yeah so every you can't, time you I can't leave your house messages i lose my willpower <laughs> you can't leave your house if you go to your car and you have a modern car they're even messaging you in your car when you get in <laughs> that's right that's right that's right <laughs> Leonard, I could talk to you all day. I, you know, one last point, you know, sure. uh, yoga science. Um, I mean, for me, it's just the profound aspect of regularly, daily, structurally doing this mindfulness technique, this training, this, you know, again, with I call, and I like to say with a ruthless focus. I mean, Leonard, if I did not do this every single day, whether I'm traveling across the world or staying in my beautiful low California property with my dog in the backyard, it is most important. Nothing gets in the way of me or my wife waking up in the morning and doing this. And again, with ruthless daily consistency and focus, I'd like for you, you know, again, as the guy who founded the American Meditation Institute 
to say how critical this is now in today's day and age with, again, the insanity that is surrounding us right now. If we really want to be happy, we really want to be healthy, we want to be secure, we want loving, nurturing relationships, meditation is a dire necessity. It's a dire necessity. Uh, I, I tell people that if, if I were still attached to, my, to the software of my mind when I was 14, mm-hmm. you remember 14, oh, Jay. Absolutely. That was, the, that was the, the, the crown of creation for us. That's when mm-hmm. we knew everything about everything, <laughs> right? 14, we knew everything about everything. Oh. And if I say, and I tell, I tell people and my students all the time that if I were still working with that software that I used when I was 14, one of two things would be true. I would either be dead mm-hmm. or I would be seriously ill. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Meditation helps me. It teaches me how to use my mind so that I can go beyond the mind and just be an instrument, be a light in the world. Right. And in the process, I become beneficiary of everything that's coming through me because I am part of the one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How often do you personally meditate? So you're meditating all day long. There are different right. forms, seated, right. silent meditation, but right. dealing with this guy that cuts you off in traffic is called meditation in action. Yes. yes. What are you going to do with this thought that evokes fear or evokes anger? Are you going to just serve it and let it grow stronger in your unconscious mind for yes. the next encounter? Right? Because it's like uh, Groundhog Day, the movie. Exactly. You know, different cast of characters, but it's the same issues. But if I can transform it, I can change the software of the mind. Mm-hmm. That becomes meditation in action. And mm-hmm. that's the meat and potatoes of meditation. Right. It's not just about you know going to the quietude, which is great. It's great. It, it provides me the tools and the skills to be skillful in the world, but it's all day long. So how often do I meditate? I try to meditate all day long unless I'm really being hijacked. Right. Emotionally right. hijacked, which, you know, I'm a human being. Right. I have a mind. But now it's not a week, a month, a year, a decade later that I come to my senses. It's only a matter of moments. Right. And I know that I got to grab a tool. I got to right. grab my mantra. I, I have to uh, uh, base out her actions on inner wisdom. I, not, I need to lean on, on my business plan in dealing with this anger. I love that. Basing outer actions on inner wisdom. We call it the bridge of yoga. Hold on, I have to write that down. It's so profound. You can call it anything you want. You know, it could be the the, the bridge of Christianity yeah, because uh, because you know Jesus was a was a yogi. You know, it. All the religions are based on on yoga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I I don't even talk about religion much anymore. But you're right. I mean, there's you know priest. There's great precepts. I like to consider it spiritual. I'm more of a kind mm-hmm. of a hybrid between the Eastern and the West. But Leonard, you are amazing. I mean, I. Off air, I'll talk to you in a little bit deeper, but uh, let me put your stuff up here. So if people want to work with you, connect with you, uh, any places that you would recommend outside of, you know, what's on this screen right now on the banner, like how would I have them get in touch with you or what would you like to promote? Well, my email is ami at americanmeditation.org. So uh, ami at americanmeditation.org. The website is americanmeditation.org. Uh, that, that, that will reach me and that would be good. And I, and I, I welcome that. And we have a free guided meditation every Sunday morning, Eastern time, nine 30 to 11 AM. Uh, you, uh, you get a guided meditation. There's a, a conversation just like you and I are having right now with Jay. And, uh, it, it's very rewarding. We have people from all over the world that, that come on, on Sunday morning. It's not always Sunday morning for them, but uh, it is for me. Uh, and uh, you also get a recording of it. 
So it's, it's, it's very helpful for the whole week. Wow. Amazing. Listen, I, if it's okay with you, I'm going to ask you now live. Um, I want to bring you into my private group. They are on Sunday nights at 6 PM Pacific standard time. Um, you know, usually there's, there's anywhere from seven to 700 to a thousand people, uh, that are in the group, but you know, I get a couple hundred people watching live usually, but if you're open to it, I would want to bring you in and just allow you to speak because your awareness is, uh, unparalleled. Let's put yeah, it that I, way. I would love it. I'd love it. Okay. Maybe, awesome. I, could, maybe I could even do a, a short PowerPoint and, uh, so that people can see. Oh, absolutely. You do whatever. It's your show. I mean, I, I would like want you just to speak about what we just spoke about. I mean, obviously you're going to, you know, a lot of people will see this when it's on the Jay Campbell podcast, but sure. uh, your, your information is, you know, it, it's very compelling and engaging and uh, I, I, more people right now privately have to understand that what you are teaching is there's nothing more important. I mean, that's, I mean, again, I'm the raise your vibration guy, right? Like resonance is what is important today. You know, getting the human, as I call it, the super central computer to a place of resonance consciously is what matters. But how we do that is what you teach. That's right. That's right. I've always been practical uh, and philosophical. Uh, I have an allergic reaction to esoterica for esoterica's sake. Unless sure. it has a practical application, right. just like when I was in Boy Scouts, you know, and the, the motto of Boy Scouts when I was in that as, as a young teenager, the motto was be prepared. I once yes. asked the uh, once asked the uh, the scoutmaster, be prepared for what? And what was his reply? How should I know? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a friend that I'm going to also introduce you to. You and him are on the same like wavelength of frequency. And he just published his book. Which literally, as you and I were talking, he, I know it's him because I have a special chime. He messaged me, probably showing me, hey, I just got the first physical uh, version. It's called Your Mind is a Prison. And I am positive, because I've already read the book, that you and him are going to be really good friends. He is a ex uh, United States Special Forces guy and just an amazing human being, only 39, so a lot younger than both of us. But you and him, like th today's show was about, you and him connecting like i i already know this because he is exactly like you when you just said what you just said about esoteric it's going to be phenomenal listen i really appreciate you from my heart thank you so thank much you. for coming on the show well i, I um, deeply appreciate it too thank you yeah, I mean, and i cannot wait to promote you so for you guys obviously please promote the amazing people that come on the jay campbell podcast go to americanmeditation.org Follow Leonard, of course, on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. It's American Meditation Institute on IG. And remember, most importantly, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.